Hey folks, Carl Kischel here, and welcome to this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Researching the cloud blogs so you don't have to. There were a ton of announcements this week since it was the week of Microsoft Build. A lot of those announcements have already been published. So I'm not gonna go through all of those announcements, but I will be highlighting some of the more interesting announcements and also focusing quite frankly on a lot of the news that was not covered at Build this week. So with that, let's jump into it. All the updates I'll be covering, the links to the specific updates and blog posts, you can find those links in the description of this video. So the first one is regarding some new enhancements regarding Power Apps and the introduction of OpenAI GPT-3, which is basically a natural language programming model, um, now integrated with Power Apps. So exactly what this allows you to do is to use the Power Apps platform to do load code app building. And regarding some of the features and functionality, specifically with natural language and Power FX, is allow you to integrate those capabilities into the development experience and also the end user experience. So in this particular example here, we're using um, natural querying language to create some of the design and coding elements of a Power App. So really cool technology that's now introduced into the Power App building experience. Check out the link for more info on how to integrate this new feature in your next Power App. Accelerating time to value with Azure Applied AI Services. So what exactly is Azure Applied AI Services? So this was a new product category announced at Build. Um, one of the more interesting announcements at Build this week. So think of Azure Applied AI Services as a pre-canned set of services that enable the cognitive services functionality within the Azure platform. So such as video indexing, um, visual analyzer, video analyzer, et cetera, and brings those cognitive services capabilities down to more of a, a solution function. So the, the blog post here gets into some of the, the details with the categories um, around AI um, applied services focus on. And a lot of that is around uh, new forms recognizer, metrics advisor, cognitive search, uh, et cetera. Immersive Reader has been around for a while. So it's kind of leveraging Azure Cognitive Services more from a, a solution perspective. If you dig a little bit deeper into the, um, the form analyzer, the form recognizer features, you can see that uh, in this example here, a lot of this is you know almost traditionally OCR, but you're using the cognitive services in Azure to extract data, but also to associate the data within the pro appropriate data types, um, numbers with numbers, part numbers with part numbers, descriptions with descriptions, uh, et cetera. So it's a really, it's a nice way to go from uh, the core services within cognitive services to more of a, a solution focus and leverage things such as form recognizer and build those capabilities into your applications. Building Teams apps for collaboration and hybrid work. So also coming out of Build were a lot of new announcements on the Teams platform and some of the simplification that's happening for application development and creation on the Microsoft Teams platform. So there's definitely a lot of uh, great collateral here if you are a Teams developer and would like to leverage some of these newer announcements. For me, I think the more interesting announcement coming out of the build is regarding Together Mode extensibility. So this is, uh, if you're not familiar with Together Mode, it's the um, video presentation within Microsoft Teams. If you're in a video conference that align the video feeds uh, I think the default scene is a um, like an auditorium or, or rows of seats. This uh, extensibility option will allow you to create your own together mode themes so you can align the video feeds as you best see fit. 
So if you're an organization and maybe you have a, a favorite conference room or logo, or maybe if you're a restaurant, if you are an educational institution and want to do some branding, a lot of different opportunities here to make a customized Teams experience for your end users. And it's fairly easy to do with all the toolkits that Microsoft is providing. So definitely, I think that's the highlight here. Check out the link for more info if you are interested in writing apps for the Teams platform. Understanding and improving your processes with Power Automate's new tool, Process Advisor. So what Process Advisor is the toolkit that basically does an assessment of the way you're using Power Automate to automate your various um, applications. Also, the way you integrate with the Microsoft uh, toolkits, solutions, applications, et cetera. So the process uh, advisor will look at existing workflows, how you interact with these applications and make recommendations within the Power Automate platform to, um, to basically either re-engineer or optimize your automation flows. So it's a free tool. If you use Power Automate, definitely something worth checking out. Azure Security Center now integrates with GitHub and GitHub Actions and specifically. So if you use the GitHub platform for application development, pushing, staging, et cetera, and you want to leverage more security or provide more security for the GitHub Actions and platform, Azure Security Center now integrates with GitHub. If you're not familiar with uh, ASC, definitely check out the link for more info on how to use ASC. But Azure Security Center is basically the security portal for all the security elements within the Azure platform. So it gives you that, that single pane of glass, if you will, regarding security, lens, uh, security events, reporting, et cetera, that can now be extended into GitHub. And um, since GitHub is a Microsoft property, having that, those details around um, application hosting, packaging, et cetera, definitely can help regarding security posture. So check out the link for more info on how to leverage this new security feature. Spot virtual machines are now generally available on Azure Databricks. If you're not familiar with Azure Databricks, it's basically a uh, overlay or a platform for your virtual machines that allow you to do um, analysis, trends, et cetera, on that particular platform for research purposes and so on. Um, the spot virtual machine uh, capability is now extended to Azure Databricks. What spot VMs are, these are uh, kind of, think of the, these as just-in-time or short-in-time virtual machine capabilities. So if you only needed uh, some compute power or a virtual machine, maybe for five minutes, for 10 minutes, and it's not something you're gonna be running uh, long-term workloads on, like an application, uh, line of business application, et cetera, you may only need 15 minutes of a virtual machine. That's basically what, what a spot VM does. Um, you can only all the way to uh, specific microseconds and seconds um, for virtual machine uh, expenses. So something that's been uh, asked for for a while and is now available on Azure Databricks. There's a public preview now available for Azure Confidential Ledger. So Azure Confidential Ledger allows you to provide um, cryptographic evidence regarding blockchain. So uh, Microsoft did announce deprecation of blockchain services on the Azure platform uh, coming this September. So you do need to, to migrate off Azure blockchain services onto a, another party. Consensus was, was one of them. However, this ledger does allow you to provide some additional security and verifiable uh, cryptography regarding interactions on a blockchain service. So these could be um, interactions and transactions on third-party blockchains, and then using the power of Azure and this new ledger to kind of verify that that transaction has occurred 
and also providing some governance around transactions. So think of this as a, an extra overlay or security measure that can be used for compliancy, validation, et cetera, of blockchain transactions. Express route peering is now available in five additional locations worldwide. So I wanted to call this out because a lot of folks uh, overseas do um, participate and view these weekly uh, news updates. In particular, our neighbors to the north in Toronto, um, you now have a new express route peering location. If you're not familiar with express route, it is the ability to create a dedicated line tunnel network connection between your data center and Azure for low latency, high bandwidth connectivity. So right now there are 75 global commercial peering locations. And with these announcements, uh, extending that to uh, these five locations across the globe. We have a few roadmap updates for you. And these items were not, to my knowledge, introduced at Microsoft Build this week. The first one of which is regarding Microsoft Search and the ability to find a meeting recording based on what was said. So if you are recording your meetings and saving them on OneDrive or SharePoint, and if that meeting was also described, you can now search for that meeting based on the transcription of that meeting. This is currently in development and will be coming soon in about a month or two. Current release target, July of 2021. Direct app purchasing and invoice billing support coming soon to the Teams Admin Center. So this will provide the capability for admins to complete orders for paid applications and licenses directly within the Teams Admin Center. So it's a, um, a, an e-commerce facility for you to pay your um, Teams apps, invoices and billing, et cetera, right from the Teams Admin Center. And um, the, the Teams platform is a bit of an ecosystem with a lot of nice third-party applications for a variety of situations and solutions and having this ability to do centralized billing, invoicing, et cetera, is going to help with uh, overall governance of these applications and streamline the purchasing uh, process within your organization. So this is currently in development and will be available in about a month or so. Offline file access for Microsoft Teams. This is also in development, coming really soon, depending on when you hear this. So ju June of this calendar year, which will allow users to access previously opened files, even when there isn't any internet connectivity. So assuming here that there'll be some kind of file caching capability enabled within the Microsoft Teams client, um, it looks like this is available for multiple Teams platforms, uh, Android platform as well. So keep on the lookout for this capability coming soon. Meeting online by default within Microsoft Outlook. Uh, this is a heads up. You're probably seeing this right now because the uh, release date is uh, May of this month. So if you do a... Um, if you create a meeting request within Microsoft Outlook, by default, that meeting will be online. So just a heads up on that, you can change this through PowerShell. So from an admin perspective within your organization, you can change the behavior. Right now, by default, the online meeting will be either Teams or Skype. Third party, third party online meetings will be supported in the near future. So just a heads up on this, uh, can be changed but you may wanna let your users know of this impending change in their experience of meeting request creation in Outlook. A new feature coming soon to Microsoft Defender for Endpoints and Endpoint Discovery. So this will be released fairly soon. It's currently in development and uh, we should see this in June of this year. And this will provide uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint admins the ability to discover and secure unmanaged endpoints in your environment. So very useful facility coming soon to Microsoft Defender Endpoint and Defender Endpoint Management. Variable playback speed coming soon 
to Microsoft Teams meetings that have been recorded and saved to either OneDrive or SharePoint. So now you'll have the ability to change the playback speed from um, half speed to 2x. So that will be coming soon, looks like September of this year. Extending Microsoft DLP and Insider Risk Management capability to Chrome. So this will be a new add-on that is available now. It's currently generally available for the Chrome browser that extends Microsoft DLP capabilities to Chrome. And the specific capabilities that will be extended um, and protections include these three areas here. So audit mode, which will allow you to record policy violations and end user activity. Block with override, so the end user would have the opportunity to override a particular policy violation or a complete block. So something that's been a, a long time coming and now available for Microsoft Compliance Manager and the extension to Google Chrome. And that concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Hope you appreciated the update this week. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of future updates, we do these about once a week. Click on subscribe, click on notification. If you would like to reach out to me with any comments or feedback, you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Send me a note in the comment section. I read all comments and feedback. So with that, appreciate your time this week. I hope you have a great week and weekend. We will catch you next time. Take care.